There is evidence that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct nor a purposefully manipulated virus, says a group of leading scientists. They published their analysis on Monday on the website uh, virological.org, a discussion forum for analysis and interpretation of virus molecular evolution and uh, epidemiology. An American politician, however, has been spreading fringe theories that say otherwise. On TV and social media, Senator Tom Cotton has been claiming the coronavirus originated from a biochemical lab in Wuhan. He's also the first to acknowledge he has no evidence to back up his hunch. Why is he pushing fake news then? Who's swallowing the story? And what are the dangers of politicians pretending to be scientists? Joining me from Shanghai via Skype is uh, Mr. Jing Ji Yong, Deputy Dean of the School of International Relations and Public Affairs of uh, Shanghai International Studies University. I'm also joined from Washington, D.C. by Dr. Eric Ding at Harvard University's Chen School of Public Health, who is also an expert advisor to the World Health Organization. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Now, um, in a uh, tweet on uh, 31st of January, Tom Cotton, the senator, insinuated that the virus could have come from a lab. He said, we don't know where the virus could have come from, but I would note that Wuhan has China's only biosafety level for super laboratory, with the world's most deadly pathogens to include, yes, the coronavirus. Now, the New York Times, together with some other publications, have pointed out that uh, uh, his suggestion that the new coronavirus originated in the lab in Wuhan lacks evidence and has been dismissed by scientists. In response, Mr. Cotton denied he ever said the coronavirus is a China bioweapon run amok. But on the other hand, he also repeated saying that given Chinese dishonesty and lack of transparency, we have to consider all possibilities until the evidence is in. Um, Dr. Din, in a legal case, this would be called slender, right? Well, Senator Cotton can say whatever he wants uh, in terms of, uh, you know, this, there's free speech in America because he didn't state anything that's fact-based. And that's the whole thing. He, nothing that he said is actually based on fact whatsoever. Um, but, you know, you have to realize, you know, in America, I previously ran for Congress. Uh, Senator Co Cotton is considered a joke, and he's, he's long-term considered a, a Trump uh, partisan puppet. He's a... He's a warmonger, and so no one um, in the establishment or the mainstream media really takes anything what he says um, with seriously. But he is a senator, and so obviously he has a platform, but he, nothing he says is based on fact, and everyone knows it, and everyone here even laughs about it and dismisses uh, his, his fear-mongering. Well, I hope that is the case because it's, it's really quite outrageous, right? You say you don't have evidence, but then you say, I suspect something is happening. Normally, you know, before you suspect, before you, you accuse somebody, you lay out a, a, you know, a preliminary set of evidence yeah. to back up your claim before you ask the other person to prove they're right or wrong. Uh, however, you say nobody's taking him seriously, but he was a guest on Fox TV, for instance, and uh, I was watching another clip with, uh, you know, Fox TV anchor and uh, another um, guest, who, uh, Peter Navarro, who was part of the Trump administration, and they were taking his claim quite seriously, and they were even talking about, you know, that his claim was not being denied by the Chinese ambassador. I'll talk about that in just, just a moment. It seems that uh, there are some people who are cheering, who are, you know, agreeing with him. Professor D Jing, how do you look at the, the kind of phenomenon surrounding the cheering for nothingness here? Yeah, it's quite surprising to me that he made up such a, a groundless uh, just accusation. Uh, of course, in, in, you know, in the United States, so there are some people who believe in a China's right theory. So I think uh, uh, Mr. Cotton um, invented this accusation just to try to please those people who believe in China's right theory. Of course, you know, this accusation, I think it's, uh, it's far-fetched. I think it's also biased. So it will cause a lot of consequences. For example, it will just lead to 
uh, stigmatization and the discrimination and even isolation. So it's detrimental to the just the international cooperation uh, to respond to inter infectious diseases. Well, I have uh, just been joined on the line by Ms. Han Hua, who is research fellow at the Chongyang Institute from Renmin University of China. Ms. Han, how do you look at this? Um, some people would uh, use, yeah, as uh, Dr. Ding just now said, you know, this is uh, freedom of expression. So in America, you can ask these kind of questions, and uh, it would be excused to ask this kind of question. What you make yourself is a different matter. But again, at a time of such importance, of such sensitivity, uh, being a senator, someone who is part of the lawmaking process, being part of the government, do you think um, such rhetoric can be excused? Uh, I'm actually visualizing that when Senator Cotton made this accusation, he stood together at least with some scientists from WHO or USCDC. But now it was just a very crazy and factor-free accusation made by his own supporters, zero. So one, on one hand, it is a very serious and almost a fatal accusation from a U.S. senator towards a government, a government which for the past 40 years worked relentlessly to, for, for its people, for example, to lift its 800 million people out of poverty, release, raise the livelihood of its people to a GDP per capita towards almost 10,000 USD in 2019. And a government whose top priority now fighting, combating the outbreak of virus to serve the people in the far front worldwide. On the other hand, the acquisition was raised by a U.S. senator, so at least there should be some associated proof or scientific evidence, but there is zero. Yeah, and I find that to be very surprising, and he keeps, you know, it's very clever, you know, how people make this kind of accusation. As I said, it's insinuation. They're not saying this is coming out of a lab. So when people prove him wrong, he can say, I never said it, so there is nothing to step back from. But actually, he was insinuating. And this is very dirty, very mean in my eyes. Now, mm -hmm. um, and it gets further. I mean, Chinese ambassador to the United States, Mr. Sui Tian Kai, went on CBS and he talked about such theories and his answer was interpreted later by some on Fox News as a tacit admission that, uh, you know, this virus could have been made by China as some kind of bioweapon or it was leaked from some kind of a, or, yeah, uh, from a bio lab. Here is what Ambassador Sui said. He said it's very dis dangerous to stir up suspicion, rumors, and spread them among the people. For one thing, this will create panic. Another thing that it will fan up, it will fan up racial discrimination, xenophobia, all these things that will really harm our joint efforts to combat the virus. Of course, there are all kinds of speculation and rumors. There are people who are saying that these viruses are coming from some military lab, not of China, maybe in the United States. How can we believe all these crazy things? So, Dr. Ding, um, I'm sorry today. Today, the question is really not about medicine. It's really not about science. It's, it's rather, rather about common sense, about understanding the situation. When you hear some, this kind of answer, does it, does it appear to you that the Chinese ambassador was tacitly admitting that this could have come from a Chinese lab? Or, you know, am I just on another planet with the people who interpret it this way? Yeah, so I think the Chinese ambassador's answer is totally fine. He, you know, the, the one rule sometimes when there's so much misinformation is don't feed the trolls. And he specifically, it, this okay, accusation by Cotton was so off of the reservation, off of any reality, that he does not want to feed the trolls by, by having to uh, address it. So in terms of uh, communications, I think it's a totally, totally legitimate uh, plan and totally legitimate response and does not actually, is not a tacit admission whatsoever. The only people who believe that are the fringe right-wing media that would love to hear a uh, conspiracy. And so, you know, you, you say like Tom Cotton was on Fox News. Yes, Fox News in America is not a center balanced media. It is a fringe uh, right wing media. So, you know, when he goes on those shows to say it, it does not give uh, him any credibility 
uh, whatsoever. On the other hand, he has been defending him, trying to defend himself, saying, you know, if you're going to err, you're going to err on the side of caution, meaning, although this is only a possibility, but you have to be honest about it, you have to put it on the table. Dr. Ding, how do you say to that? Because I do agree that people need to be extra cautious and people need to be prepared for the worst, especially at times of an epidemic. But does his insinuation count in the category of erring on the side of caution? No, it's not erring on the side of caution. We could also make up theories that it was brought here by aliens to wipe out. It makes no sense whatsoever. Erring on the side of caution is thinking about, all right, things that could actually affect our public health containment. That is what, what we must focus on. The, these other accusations, n there's no evidence whatsoever. And, and to, to throw them out uh, there in the middle of this epidemic is complete distraction to public health distracting us that are taking time away our, on our airwaves from actually discussing the true uh, human plight mm. of this epidemic. Mm. Um, Professor Jing, now Mr. Cotton has been critical of China actually for a long time. He called China evil empire. Um, but at this moment to say something like this, has he gone even further? I mean, besides going far, he has, has, has he gone really, you know, totally over the line here? I start to sound like an anchor on Fox News, by the way. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a critical moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a critical mo uh, moment, uh, you know, not only about the crisis, but also about the Central American relations. So it's really irresponsible for Mr. Colton to just invent such an accusation. I don't think it's uh, science-based. Uh, I think it's a little bit uh, just uh, political-based. Uh, political motivated, so, uh, so we should be very careful about this kind of accusation because it will cause a lot of consequences. It, it will just uh, be detrimental to the sino American relations mm -hmm. and, you know, it will also just uh, curb uh, the international efforts to respond to the epidemic. And uh, as you know, United States and China uh, just uh, signed an agreement uh, one month ago, two months ago. So I think it's a good beginning. So, uh, so uh, yeah. the, this kind of accusation is, is very harmful for no. that good beginning. Yeah, it's not helpful. Now, Ms. Han, finally, uh, I have about 30 seconds left. With social mm -hmm. media, it's so easy right you just type something mm -hmm. you send it and y you don't have to do a lot of research it seems that it's very very easy but how much more responsible you have to be if you have that very convenient tool i, I think uh, it should be on the basis that the background information is fact based the fact check and the scientific and objective needs it need to be applied to the when it comes to the public health concerns so i'm actually advocating that when it comes to social media, uh, the public information trans transmission, the scientists, experts involved in research and the investigation could be able to share more background information down the road together with the public. And the government, be it the Chinese government or other countries' government, is still in a learning process too. So learning and the sharing are equally important, in my opinion. All right. We're going to leave it there. Many thanks. Dr. Eric Ding at Harvard uh, University Chen School of Public Health, Jing Ji Rong, Deputy Dean at the School of International Relations and Public Affairs at Shanghai International Studies University, and Han Hua Research Fellow at the Chongyang Institute of uh, Renming University of China. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the application called CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.